If you want to learn how to make tile map games, then stick around. Open up the asset store, click 2D, go to free assets, get Pixel Adventure 1. Open it in Unity, download it if you need to, I don't need to, and import it. Import everything you see here. This is an example of a sprite map that has already been sliced into pieces. And you can see it says terrain slice 16 by 16. And the first one is not. When you expand it, you see that there's one giant image here. If you want to learn how to slice this, go to the inspector and click multiple. Set it for 16 pixels per unit. Open it in the sprite editor. Click slice and change the type to be grid by cell size. Change the pixel size to be 16 by 16 and slice it. It doesn't give you any feedback saying that it worked. Click apply and you see it changed down, down there. Now when you click this, it looks just like the one here. Go into the hierarchy, add a new 2D object, tile map, rectangular. Since we're using this terrain tile map, we'll call this terrain for now. Go to tile palette. If you need to find the tile palette window, you can find it going to window 2D and then tile palette. Click create new tile palette. Give it a name. Choose where you want to save it. Now I get this error right here. I believe that this is a bug in Unity whenever you have your project and assets saved to a drive that is an external drive. I was able to reproduce this error numerous times. So what I did is remade the project on a local hard drive instead. So this is the new project stored on my local drive. Create a new palette. I'll call it Terrain Palette. I do create. Save it in this folder right alongside of these sprites and it works fine. Go to your tile palette and drag in the sliced images here and we now see a palette of all of our different images that we can pick from. In our hierarchy we have to make our tile map so add a 2D tile map rectangular. Call it terrain and now we can draw things in our tile map. And draw some tiles to your liking. Next, we're gonna add a player. Go to your hierarchy, add a 2D object, sprite, square, call it player. In the assets, in the pixel adventure assets, go to main characters and find a character that you'd like to use. I'll use Ninja Frog and I will pick an idle image, the very first one, and I will drag that into the sprite of my player. You can see that he's very tiny over here because we have to set the pixels per unit right here. So you wanna click the very first one here and set this to, I believe, 32. And then, and set it to 32 and click apply. I'll move my player over, run it, and there we have it. Now let's add some physics to the player. Add a rigid body 2D to the player. Add a collider to the player, box collider 2D. Run it. And you can see he'll fall through because we don't have a collider on the ground. Select terrain, add a component. This time choose tile collider 2D and run it. And now we have the player standing on top of the ground. Click the player, mouse over the player, and click F, and adjust the boundaries of this player on the collider. So in the inspector, look under Box Collider 2D, click Edit Collider, and move these boxes in to represent the actual size of your player. Let's add a script to the player so that we can get some basic movements. So I'm adding a script called Player Movement Script all right, so here we have the player movement script. We have a couple variables at the top. We have the spacebar detection, or we have the spacebar boolean here. We have two variables for jumping and moving speed. 
we have the rigid body and we have the X direction. So inside the start, go ahead and get a reference to the rigid body in update. Check to see if your user inputs are being pressed. Here we're using get access raw since it's a 2D game. In fixed update, we are setting the velocity of our right and left movement based on this X direction. And then we are also checking to see if the space bar is pressed. And we run it and we can, well, kind of move around. We do kind of spin around here. And if you want to prevent that rotation, you can go to Rigid Body 2D, expand the constraints, and click on the Z axis freeze rotation. You can see how I can stick to the walls like this as well if I just click the right arrow while I'm on the side of one of these walls here. We can fix this by making a new material. So we can go into our assets and right click and create a 2D physics material 2D. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it slip. And all we have to do is just take this friction all the way down to zero. And then select our player and you really have two options here. You can connect it to the rigid body or to the collider. So I will put it on the collider and then we'll run this. And now you can't stick to the walls anymore. And just for fun you can see the effect of bounciness and he just bounced off the screen to infinity so you want to pick a value between 0 and 1 it's kinda like a pinball machine now and when we have complete bounciness on he breaks the laws of physics and bounces higher than where he started from I'm gonna keep the bounciness at 0 we can expand our palette now we can go to the background folder. This file needs sliced up as well, so change the sprite mode to multiple. Click apply, then click the sprite editor. Click slice, do grid by cell size, and do 16 by 16. Click slice, click apply, and now we can see this expand and show each of our options here. We can add this background into our palette. We currently don't have any concept of layers. So if I were to draw a background of sky like this, it will just right over top of my terrain that I already have down. What we want to do is create another tile map. So you can click on your grid, right click, do create 2D object, tile map, and then rectangular and we can call this background so when we draw you need to pick which tile map you want to draw on you can see right now I have terrain selected and I have background selected now so if I were to take the eraser and try to erase anything we don't have any tiles in the background tile map yet <clears throat> so if I were to erase the terrain here, tile map, then we see that happen. So you can click background and then you can draw on the background. I'm going to use this uh, square fail tool like this. It's possible that you draw this and don't see anything showing because it's being drawn in front of our terrain right now. Currently we don't have any definition of what is in front and what is in back. You can see when I click the terrain uh, it does highlight it 
but we don't see the tiles showing. So what we need to do is add a sorting layer. You want to click your background and then bring up the inspector and then take a look at the additional settings down here, expand those and you'll see a sorting layer and order in layer. What we want to do is click this sorting layer and add a new sorting layer. Go ahead and click the plus sign in this little window here and I will call this background layer. And then you want to put that all the way in the back by dragging it to the top. So we'll draw the background layer first and then this layer second and so forth. So we'll add another layer, we'll call it terrain layer. So now we want to set the layers of each of these tile maps. So you can go to terrain and then down at the bottom you can look at additional settings. So for terrain set that to the terrain layer and for the background set that to the background layer. And now we can see that these draw in the correct order. Now for us since the sky is background uh, we would not want to have colliders on it. If we did, then our player would probably just get stuck where he's at. So if we were to put a tile collider on the background, this is what happens. Just kind of stays stuck here. He can't move. Well, barely can, he can move a little bit. Not, not really. So make sure there's no colliders on your background layers. You can see for me, my character sometimes gets stuck. I'm holding in right, but he's not moving. Then I can try again, he gets stuck, he gets stuck again. Right now I get stuck at a different spot. And now I'm stuck over here. Right, I can make him get stuck on here. See that? The reason this happens is because each of these tiles is treated as a separate collider and it's colliding with two different objects at the same time. So while the sprite is on top of one tile, he's okay, but as soon as he crosses over a little bit into the next tile, the tile in front of him is pushing him to the left and the tile underneath him is pushing him up. So you can go to your terrain tile map and add a new component. And what we want to do is add a composite collider 2D. Now when this happens, it adds a rigid body. Since we have a rigid body, our terrain now falls away. So you can change the rigid body type of the terrain to just be static. And now when we run it, we have a static rigid body that doesn't move. And so far we're not getting stuck yet. Oh, and you can see we're stuck. So we have to complete the process here and um, turn on used by composite right here. And what this does is it treats the whole terrain as a single collider. So you can see when it's off, we have all of these little grids here showing that these are separate colliders. And instead what we're going to do is we're going to put used by composite and that treats this whole thing as one single object. And right now we're not getting stuck. So we're not getting stuck up here either. Here is a part where you want to perhaps edit the size of your collider for your player. Right here you can see that I'm standing over the ledge and I'm not falling down like this. So for him, for the player, it might make sense to squeeze that in a little bit because you can see where his foot is at, it might make sense to put the collisions right by his feet. Now, on the downside, you can see he kind of goes through this uh, 
he goes through this wall a little bit here, but he does fall down. So you, you really you it comes down into the design of of this sprite. His head is so much wider than his feet here. So you can see that his head and bandana are much wider than his feet. So you kind of have to pick a sprite that makes sense. And you can see when I jump, his bandana kind of disappears behind this wall right here. And that's your tutorial on tile maps. I hope you learned something. Have a great day.